Alright, morning everyone. Looks like we're starting our day off early with a beautiful three-toed box turtle. Look at the colors on this guy. Anyway, there's a car coming, so let's get him up off the road. Set him down in the grass. And of course, now that I've messed with him, he's all shut up and won't come out, but that's probably the best shell that I have seen on one yet. Look at all those colors. I don't know if you saw in the little clip, but he had a beautiful red head. I'm gonna wait to see if he comes out in a minute, but then uh, we'll just leave him be. Let's just poke his head out a little bit here. See those gorgeous red and orange colors that he's got on his head there? Leads into orange and white spots on his neck. He probably won't come out too much further than this, but that's alright. He's off the road. He's not gonna get hit by the cars that just went by. So we'll leave him to it. And we got a second one out here. Oh, he sees me coming, so he's closed up. You don't have quite as pretty a shell, dude. Here. Get across. There you go. Alright, this is starting to get ridiculous at this point. Sir, highways are not good for you. And you're hiding. Mm-hmm. Put it down near the pretty paintbrushes. Hmm? There's five turtles this morning. And yet another. What are you guys all doing out here and why won't you show me where the snakes are, huh? Well, sir. We got some interesting colors going on. Look at you. White face. I wonder if that means you're female? I have to look. Alright. Let's get you off the road then. There's a nice little patch right there. There. You're a pretty guy, you know that? Look at that leg. been a hot minute now but what do you know another turtle this is just a little guy too hello sir you're adorable let's get you across the highway here before anyone runs you over huh? look at that little face hi you're not quite so colorful yet are you okay here you go There's a nice shell color there to you, though. Main highway. Sir, you can't stay here. Get over here, quickly. Needless to say, the morning started off with turtles, turtles everywhere, and not a spot to think. There were so many, I did not bother filming them all either. Just box turtles everywhere you looked. Uh, moving further uh, north and west, I stopped by a little wildlife refuge, uh, a couple places where there were some incredible flowers opening, some big yuccas and some huge penstemons, and finally started to get my first signs of snakes in the area. Oh no! Where'd he go? Weird. It was a racer. Didn't see him go past the Smilax patch, but who knows. Damn. Alright, still not skunked. Now, around here, if you go by the range map, supposedly this is what they would call a red-sided garter snake, but quite frankly, 
it looks nothing like any red sided I have ever seen before. So, since they uh, kind of integrate along their edges in the on the edges of Oklahoma, I would say this really fits better. Ow, dude, don't bite me. The Texas garter snake, Thamnopus sertalis anectens. Dude, just calm down, will ya? They are, yeah, they are a rear fang venomous species like all other garter snakes are, but they are harmless. So even if they bite you, it can't do a whole lot. I thought I was chasing something quite a bit bigger than this guy too, because the weeds were just being really noisy. Yeah, you're gaping a lot, I see. You're fine. But this is what we got. He's uh, about two inches long, or two inches, 20 inches long. And we're gonna get a couple of photos and then let him on his way, since he's being so grumpy. We really can't blame him for being a grumpy, of course, because as far as he knows, he was just grabbed by a predator who intends to eat him. And he's also in shed, which is a snake's perhaps most sensitive period, because the uh, lubricant that goes in between the layers of their skin, that kind of clouds over their eyes, makes it really hard for them to see. But, so, uh, what I was talking about uh, calling this a Texas garter snake, even though the range maps say red sided, is I think a lot of Oklahoma is kind of poorly studied in terms of the actual genetics of these animals, and these guys fit the perfect appearance of the Texas garters, which range kind of south and disjunctly along the range, uh, more kind of in the northeast uh, part of Oklahoma as well. Uh, they are characterized by the really bright orange stripes, kind of like plains garter snakes have, and um, darker sides. All right, since he's so grumpy and in a hurry, here he goes back into the weeds. All right, check this guy out. I have no idea what they are, but they're very much in a hurry, whatever they are. Brilliantly green beetles with like orange side stripes. And quite large too, he's an inch and a half, two inches long. Let's see what he does. There he goes. And out on the lake here is a turtle of some kind. Looks like your classic red-eared slider. Very common creatures. Come on, focus camera. That's better. And there is a race runner. Under my, the front of my car. Don't know what he's doing there, but okay. And this is a bit of a first. Finding a box turtle in C2. Pretty good size one too. Shell's about 10 inches long, maybe more. She might have a little trouble getting up that slope though, so we might push her up that way. Hey you, oh no need to be scared. Hi. What are you doing? You show us your pretty face? No? Okay. Well, let me put my stuff down here. I'm gonna just kind of help you up the slope, okay? Up here. You're okay. There you go. Hi. Oops, finger in the way, I'm sorry. Here you 
You're so pretty. Not gonna come out though. Oh, there you go. Well, don't go back down the slope. That pretty face. Not as colorful as some of the others though, huh? At this point I've seen quite a variation in the uh, color of these box turtles, but up to this point I had never seen uh, one with this odd like black mustache that this girl was sporting. There she goes. Off into the forest. Very, very slowly. That's adorable. We got ourselves a little fence lizard. I think out here we are far enough east that we have the actual eastern fence lizard and not yet the prairies. But I'll have to double check uh, the range maps. It's the first one that sat still long enough for me to actually get a look at him. Or her, it might be. Who knows? Got a bug. Well, we've got somebody a little different here crossing the road. One of the uh, cooters, I think. He is absolutely covered in mess. I'll have to uh, try and key this one out. Looks like actually a female. Convex plastron. Although those are some long toenails. I have to see. Anyways, he was starting to head the other way, so we're gonna actually turn him around and help him across real quick. That's something I don't think I ever expected to see. Deep in the forest, right alongside the poison ivy, is some sort of Looks like almost spineless prickly pear cactus, and it's just getting ready to bloom. Hmm. There's a ribbon snake right there. wasn't hard at all. Hey you! I've never gotten to see a large one. You're okay, come here. Alright, snake number two for the day. Quite similar to the first, but as you can see by how he's built, so very different is a western ribbon snake with some beautiful blues on his face there. And now he's calmed down. That's nice. We can get a couple good photos. So this is Thamnophis proximus proximus, the orange striped rib ribbon snake. Subspecies of the western ribbon. They can be quite common out here. And uh, they tend to be very much focused on worms and fish in their diet. Now how you can tell the difference between this and your other average garter snake is one, how long and skinny they are, but also two, the very very clean pattern in between the stripes, there's no other markings really. There's that little white dot that's right in front of his eye, and usually these guys don't really show that much in terms of the labial bars, the little dark outlines on their lip scales, like other garter snakes do. So. He's not huge, but uh, they can get a little bit bigger, up to three, three and a half feet. Of course, at that size, they still look ridiculously small because they're so slender. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to get a couple of photos and then let him back on his way. All right, dude, thank you for sitting so cooperatively. You were right over on here. Oh yes, now you freak out because you see I'm letting you go. Hold on, hold on. Calm down, you're okay. There. Zoom. And he disappears.
you know, hiking in the forest is definitely kind of an otherworldly experience. When you live on the Great Plains, there's constantly things moving in the leaf litter. It's 80 something degrees out here still too, but because there's clouds and tree cover, it feels great. And obviously with the ribbon we just found, snakes are active. Just hoping we can find a couple of the ones that are more exclusive to this area. He's one of these shiny little beetles staying a little open. Well, he was staying more still. There's a deer right there. First time I've seen them when they're not just been running away. Hello, madame. She's just covered in ticks. My god. That's a disturbing sight. Yeah, I was definitely not ready to see that at all, and I should have taken it as a warning for what I would encounter later on that evening. Oh my god, the tick bombs. Luckily, got rid of most of them. So, here's a quick picture of a cool uh, hornworm to kind of wash that off, and then back to the reptiles. You'd be amazed how hard these guys are to actually get a hold of. Another little ground skink here. Those adorable little dumpy feet. Do you actually have toes, dude? Kind of. They barely have toes. It's like they've got just enough limb to kind of scoot themselves around. And that's about it. Get a decently sized tail on this one. Beautiful bronzy top, that black stripe. And they're the only species in their genus around here. And across most of the U.S. Because they are not in the Plestiodon genus with the other, like, five line Great Plains skinks and such. It's so cute. But hopefully we can find, uh, what eats them out here. Okay, dude. Off into the leaves with you. Ready? Go! And he's gone. And a second, much paler one with a very, very long tail. Kind of a golden color on the belly, too. Very interesting. You're cute. You're adorable. Nice to see one with a full tail. We'll let you go now, okay? Right off into the dirt. Zoom. Yeah, we got ourselves a little young in here. You're adorable, sir. Hold on. You're okay. Hey, you actually have toes on your feet this time. Guess the other ones just had some rough times. We got some nice colors, though. All right. Back into the weeds with you. Ready, set, run! I said run. Sir, there you go. Yep. It's not much, but it is an American toad. It's a species I don't get to see back home very much. Not a colorful guy too. Beautiful. Alright, I think we have here a herder spadefoot toad. 
kind of replaces the Great Plains spade foots as you head east. Whoops, and he's wanting to run away. <laughs> yeah, definitely a different color and pattern than the uh, Great Plains. Adorable. You get him in a better position to hold here. No. Okay. Get a couple of photos of you and then let you on your way. All right, dude. You should go that way. Run, run. Well, I'd say today ended up being a turtle of a day in more ways than one. Uh, I think we missed out on a couple of species that I really wanted to see, uh, like the uh, western pygmy rattlesnakes, so that means there will have to be a trip to, uh, back down to this area at some point, although perhaps not to right this area where I'm at right now, because as you can hear, this hotel is not exactly in the greatest of locations, but it was available. Anyway, uh, one last day tomorrow in Oklahoma. Uh, fingers crossed that I can avoid the line of storms that's going to be moving through in the morning and maybe find some stuff that's moving around during the day because it's going to be a whole lot cooler tomorrow than it has been the past week almost. So hopefully we'll get some good stuff out of that. But until next time, uh, thanks always to my patrons for helping to support the production of videos like this. If you'd like to help support, uh, consider joining at patreon.com slash hcarlton. Uh, the link will be in the description below, along with if you don't want to do a monthly subscription. Uh, remember, members there do get exclusive benefits, like uh, access to the seed contest that I do every month. Uh, there's exclusive merchandise, you get early access to the videos, and more. But you can also do one-time donations through Coffee. That link with all, will also be in the description. And uh, you can buy stuff at the uh, shop at carltoncarnivores.com. I've always got plants available for sale. Uh, we've also got jewelry made from uh, some of my uh, pet snakes' uh, shed skins. Uh, or if you can't do, if you can't help out financially, then simply giving attention to the channel helps out. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the videos. And if you'd like to see more photos, videos, little tidbits here and there, you can always find me on uh, social media: Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Carlton Carnivores. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores.